Jerry of the Circus. For Jerry of the Circus. <laughs> well, Rags, old fellow, what's the hurry? Bump, bump. Well, Jerry, what's all exciting? Hey, look. I just got the morning paper, and it's all about Flat. Headlines all over the front page. You don't say. Yeah, they got him. It says right here in the paper that the police caught him last night. No, you don't say. Here, let's have a look at that paper. Yeah, here. Read it. <laughs> Quiet, Rags. Well, I declare. Read it out loud, Bumps. I didn't get a chance to finish. I was in such a hurry to let you see. Well, let's just sit down here on these steps. <laughs> okay. Come on, Rags. Lie down and be quiet. Now, it says, um, carrying several thousand dollars in negotiable securities... Alleged to have been stolen in a sensational mail robbery four years ago, Stephen Platt, for the past eight years, baggage master of the Hansburg Railway Station of the LM&O lines, was apprehended and arrested by deputy sheriff as he was about to board a southbound freight train late last night at Garden Junction. Gee, he, he might have gotten away. Say, it's lucky the police got there in time. Yeah, the law has to work fast, Jerry. Go on. What else does it say? Yeah, let's see. A plat is being held at the Hansburg Police Station under $20,000 cash bail, pending trial. Serves him right. Uh -huh. Then it goes on to tell about the robbery. Yeah, the one they're keeping Spike in jail for. Now, wait a minute, Jerry. Now, listen to this. Detective work done by two members of Randall's Circus, now playing Hansburg, is largely responsible for the apprehension of Stephen Platt. This new evidence brought to light by these amateur sleuths... But that's us, Jason and me. <laughs> yes. Will no doubt be instrumental in releasing Max Peters, who is now serving a 20-year sentence for this same mail robbery. Well, that's Spike Bump. Ah, oh, gee, we, we've really helped it him. It certainly looks like it, Jerry. Now, wait till I finish this now. Uh, uh, a speedy retrial of the case is assured by presiding Judge Leroy. Well, Jerry... Looks like they caught Platt red-handed this time. Yeah. Now it's... Yeah. Well, now what? <laughs> Seems like you ought to be mighty pleased. Oh, of course I, I am as far as Spike's concerned. Oh, what's gotten into you? you? You were all excited, and then all of a sudden you act like a punctured balloon. Is there something wrong? I was just thinking. Oh, well, it shouldn't have hurt that much. <laughs> no, but this is serious. It's about Tom. Well, what about it? Oh, what'll he do now? Where'll he go? Well, how do you mean, Jerry? Well, he hasn't got any money at all. Well, honest, Bumps, he's about as bad off as I was before I joined out with this circus. Well, hasn't he got any folks? Oh, I guess I didn't have a chance to tell you much about Tom. What with all the excitement. Oh, huh? I should say not. <laughs> You've been busier than a cat with nine kittens since we reached Hansburg. Yeah, I know. Well, you see, Bumps, Tom's got a dad, but he doesn't know where he is. Oh, that's funny. It sure is. His dad left Tom quite a while ago with Platt. Then all of a sudden, he stopped writing him. Well, Tom's been working for his keep ever since. Mm -hmm. When did he last hear from his father? A long time back. I don't know exactly. Mm, where was his dad then? In Fordham, I think. But, of course, there's no knowing where he is now. Well, oh, it doesn't sound natural for a man to just stop writing to his own son with, with no explanation at all. And the worst of it is that Tom hasn't got a penny. Well, I take it Platt never paid him for his work then. Huh? No, I'll say he didn't. He was awful mean to Tom, too. Made him work hard and everything. Mm-hmm. 
It seems like the circus plays for them, Jerry. Yeah, I know, but I don't see how that'll help Tom. Unless... Say, uh, of course, I, I might be able to try and find his dad when we get there. Mm -hmm. But if Tom hasn't a job or anything, <clears throat> he's likely to get pretty hungry by that time. Yeah, that's a trouble. If only... Hmm, I wonder. What, Jerry? Oh, I wonder if there'd be any chance of Tom going along with the circus until we get to Fordham. Well, no, Well, I he could know. work for his keep. He's an awful good worker, Bump. Do you think there's a chance? Well, it's an idea, all right. Of course, Mr. Randall's the boss around here. Yeah, he, he's been so swell to me, I, I kind of hate to ask any more favors, but... Well, Tom's really in a spot. Well, and... Can't do any harm to ask. He can't do any more than say no. That's right. And besides, I, I just got to try and do something for Tom. He said he'd come over this morning and say goodbye. See, listen, Bob. Yes, Jerry? I'm going to run over now and see Mr. Randall. If Tom gets here before I get back, make him wait for me. Of course I will, Jerry. Wouldn't it be great if I... Hey, come on, Rags. We, we got to hurry. <coughs> hey, hey, wait a minute. Here he comes now. Uh, uh, who, who, Mr. Randall? Uh-uh, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hello, hello there. Hello there, Tom. Morning, Bumps. <laughs> Say, Tom, you seen the papers? Yeah, they caught him just in the nick of time, didn't they? They sure did. I guess that's the last time Platt will ever be mean to you. Yeah, the police sure ought to be grateful to you, Jerry. Guess maybe they never would have caught him if it hadn't been for you. Got any plans, Tom? Well, how do you mean? Figured out what you're going to do next. Well, what can I do? Well, I just wanted to be sure. Well, will you excuse me for a minute, Tom? I, I got an errand. You stay here with Bunk. Sure. There's no place I could go anyhow. I'll be right back. I got an idea, and, well, right. Come along, right. Come on. <laughs> well, good luck, Jerry. We'll be waiting. Okay. Keep your fingers crossed. I will. What do you say that for, Bunk? Uh, what? Uh, keeping your fingers crossed. Oh, oh that. Oh, it's a little secret Jerry has. <clears throat> Maybe he can tell you about it later. I hope so. Oh. Say, Tom, uh, Jerry tells me you haven't heard from your father in a long time. No. Well, it's kind of funny, too. Because when he did write, he was always awful regular. Wrote every week. Mm -hmm. Were you and your dad good friends? Oh, we sure were. Say, he took me every place. Well, we were buddies. Uh-huh. Uh, how do you happen to leave you with Platt? Well, you see, he got a job out of town in, in a place called Fordham. I see. Well, he couldn't take me very well at first, but he was going to send for me as soon as he could. Were he and Platt friends? Well, we didn't know Mr. Platt very well, but when Dad got this job, Mr. Platt said I could stay with him for a while. Until your father could send for you, huh? Yeah, but... And Dad was going to send a little money now and then, but, well... I guess he just never had it to send. And uh, you don't know whether he's still in Fordham or not, huh? No, but... But if he didn't have a job, I don't see how he could get any place else, not having any money or anything. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> well, sounds like our friend Jerry's back already. There he comes now, with Mr. Randall. Bumps, he's going to do it. It's all fixed. Well, good morning, young man. Good morning, Mr. Randall. I, I hope you don't mind my being here. Well, of course I don't mind, Tom. I, I just had to say goodbye to Jerry and all, and, well, uh, well uh, I... By the way, Tom, uh, what are you planning to do now that you aren't working for Mr. Platt? Well, uh, I really don't know. I... Uh, Jerry tells me you've got a father in Fordham. Well, I think I have. Well, I mean, I think he's in Fordham. Uh -huh. I, I don't suppose he knows about all this uh, Platt mix-up. I'm sure he doesn't. I'm afraid now he'll never know how to get in touch with me, now that Mr. Platt won't be here anymore. Well, now, Tom, uh, I, I don't suppose you'd want to join up with us until we get to Fordham, huh? What? I, I, I think I might be able to find some work for you to do, you know, so, so you could earn your way. Y you mean it, Mr. Randall? Isn't it wonderful? Of course I mean it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you'll, you'll probably be able to make a couple of dollars for yourself so you won't arrive in Fordham broke. Gee, Mr. Randall, I, well, I can hardly believe it. Now, now I'll tell you what uh, you two boys do. Uh, you run over to the kitchen and see if Leo can rustle up a job for Tom. You bet we will, Mr. Randall. Can't have a couple of boys around here with time on their hands. Come on, Tom. <laughs> I'll race you over to the mess den. You're on it. Well... You know how thankful I am, Mr. Randall. All right, son. Come on, Tom. <laughs> Bet I beat you. Bet you don't. <laughs> oh, look at those boys run. <laughs> ah, they're nice kids, both of them. Hey, you bet they are. I wish I was young again. Mm -hmm. 
I tell you, Bumps, you're, you're getting to be a sentimental old man. That's what you are. Why, Sam? What do you mean, sentimental? Uh, you didn't fool me one bit. I know perfectly well who put Jerry up to ask me to help Tom. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. It was Jerry's idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I know who gave it to him. You can't fool me. Oh, oh yeah? Well, when it comes to that, I don't <laughs> think your heart's made of stone yeah. either. Uh, what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Listen, you can't fool me. Leo doesn't any more need an extra hand, and I need another foot. Uh, well, uh, we won't go into that. Uh, what I really wanted to tell you was that uh, I have to take Jerry and Jason down to the district attorney's office before we leave town. Oh, anything serious? Oh, no, no, no. They, they just got to sign some papers regarding their discoveries on this case. And uh, here's where you come in. Jerry has to take along that red sweater he picked up in uh, Platt's barn. No. Why, you're kidding. No, no, I'm not. It'll be one of the exhibits in the trial. Oh, just my luck. I <laughs> never get the breaks. <laughs> well, I see where I'll have to say goodbye to that nice sweater, then. <laughs> District Attorney will see you now, Mr. Randall. Thank you, young man. Yes, come right this way, Mr. Randall. It was nice of you to take your valuable time and accompany these people. Oh, I'm only too glad to, Mr. Stanton. I've had the papers all drawn up. You want to look them over before Jason and Jerry sign them? Yeah, I'd be glad to. And so you're Jerry Dugan. Mm, yes, sir. Here's the sweater you told me to bring, sir. Well, I'm mighty glad to meet you, son. Now, there are just a couple of things I want to straighten out before you leave town. Well, I'll be glad to tell you anything I know, sir. Good. Now about this man, Spike. I understand he's a friend of yours. He sure is. When he told me how he'd been framed, I just made up my mind I'd do everything I could to try and find out who framed him. So you're convinced he's innocent, huh? Of course. Well, doesn't this prove it? I mean, fine and flat with the goods and all? Well, it may and it may not. After all, so far there's no proof that Max Peters, the man you call Spike, and Platt weren't working together. Oh, no. It couldn't be. Have you anything more than Spike's word for this? Oh, no, but I, I'd trust Spike any time. Isn't it possible that they were working together and then the Platt double-crossed Spike at the last minute? But Spike just isn't that kind. Honesty isn't, Mr. Stanton. I admire your loyalty, son. However, it's all probably will be cleared up at the trial. I just wanted to be sure you didn't have any more information. You know, to help clear your friend's good name. No. I wish I did, but Spike didn't have the least idea who'd framed him. All I knew was that he worked for a man named Platt. That's all you had to go on, eh? Yes, sir. That, that's all. All right, Jerry. Thank you very much. Now, if Jason and Mr. Randall have finished looking those papers over, yes. we'll get them signed. All right. And that's all we have to do? That'll be all. It's all we can do until the trial comes up. 